Hi everyone, Sabrina here with another wrap up video. Frustratingly, I've managed to wipe the original version of this video from the computer before my husband edited it. So clever me, I'm now doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> I've already done a Sherlockathon wrap up for the books that I read over the October November period. Um, during November, I did believe a thon three that's hosted by How to Train Your Gavin, which is a month long readathon where you read middle grade or eight to 12 year old books. Because there are so many fantastic books out there, you've got so much choice. Anyway, we had a list of prompts. I'll link you to the website so you can find out all that info because it's much clearer than me trying to ramble on here telling you everything. And the idea was to read a book for a prompt. Now you could double up on prompts. I didn't. I thought I'd be adventurous and try and do a book per prompt. It didn't quite work out. I did not manage to complete all the books I wanted to read. I didn't manage to get two books that I really desperately wanted to read this year for lots of reasons. The main one being it was extremely hard to get my hands on a copy of the books without using Amazon because uh, for some reason some books haven't been published in the UK yet. So anyway, let's start up with what I did manage to read. The Highland Falcon Thief by H.G. Leonard and Sam Sedgman. This is book one in Adventures on Trains series. Book two is currently out, Kidnapped on the Californian Comet, which I'm actually quite excited to read. I have done a review on this, so please check that out. Link in the description box down below. I was pleasantly surprised. I don't really read middle grade mystery. I, I moved on from Nancy Drew and all that, but this was actually really good very entertaining i love the characters and i love the setting so if you want more ramblings on that go and read the review so that was for the key prompt which meant i got into the manor house and could start solving the mystery for the screen prompt i listened to the abridged audiobook of charmed life by diana Wynne jones read by tom baker i did this it was about three hours long it's on cassette so my last tape got a little bit dodgy got a little squeaky and tight and i had to loosen it off Remember doing that with a pencil or are you too young for that? I was surprised how much of it I'd kind of forgotten and was very entertained by the whole twists and turns that Diana Wynne Jones puts into her story. She's very, very clever like that. I love a lot of her stories. And Charm Life is the first one in the Crestomancy series, so we meet the whole magic in our world. The Crestomancies are the most powerful sorcerers and they basically keep the balance between those with magic and those without magic. And it's really clever and I really enjoyed it and I got to actually sit down and read the book which has got obviously a lot more um, bits and bobs that aren't in the abridged audiobook. But I really loved it so I highly recommend that. It does seem that you can't really get that version anymore though which is a shame because Tom Baker actually does a really good job narrating it and he does go for the voices as well which is very cool. For the torn page prompt I read Nevermore The Trials of a Morgarian Crow by Jessica Townsend. This has been about for a little while now and people love it and yes this is very very different. It's clever, it's interesting, it talks a lot about family and prejudice and obviously good against evil but it's really wacky the world of nevermore is just so bizarre and fun and loving i really enjoyed this and i will probably plow my way through the rest of the books i think there are three i think unless i'm mixing it up with another series but i've got to read these because they're just really entertaining and i love them for the spilled ink prompt, I read Amelia Fang and the Barbaric Ball by Laura Ellen Anderson. It's my son's book and I can't seem to find his set, in which much mean it's hiding in his bed somewhere. And I'm not going in there. It's the first in the Amelia Fang series, so we are introduced to her world, her friends, and it's very much kooky and fun. Um, they are very short, quick reads and very, very delightful. My bugbear is that the bully who we are supposed to sympathise with by the end of the story because he's got this, you know, heartfelt problem and it's like, yes, but that doesn't mean you have to be a complete twit. Um, it's not going to make me like you more just because you've had a hard time. There's no excuse for being a bully and I'm kind of sick of books using that excuse for the way bullies behave. No, there's no excuse for being a bully. There is no excuse for making someone else's life miserable. So that was my only gripe about the story. But apart from that, I loved it. For the dagger prompt, I read The Afterward by E.K. Johnson. Okay, this was probably pushing it for middle grade. I thought it was more of a middle grade than a YA, but actually it's possibly the boundaries of young YA. I loved this. 
I know a lot of people don't like E.K. Johnson's writing style, they don't like the way that she's bounced this between two different timelines and it's not always obvious whose voice you are listening to when those timelines change but I, I love this so much. I love E.K. Johnson's writing style and I find her characters are really interesting and they're not perfect, they are flawed characters which is really cool. There is LGBTQ plus representation in this, there is a strong friendship, romance, lots of women who are allowed to just get on and do what they want to do and it's just I really just love this. This very much was about the journey that you're going on with these characters rather than the end event. It was one of those stories and I did love it hugely. For the backpack I read Tinsel by Sibel Ponder. That was borrowed from my work library so I don't have a copy with me. There you go. Uh, this is a Father Christmas retelling. We got the story wrong and it wasn't a boy, it was a girl. There you go. And I have done a review on this, again, link in the description box down below. But basically, I'm going to sum this up as wonderfully bonkers. I mean, the, some of the things that happen in there are just absolutely what? But when the story progresses and that, it really kind of clicks all together. And I enjoyed it immensely. For the hand mirror prompt, I picked The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell by Chris Koffler. I think I've done a review on this as well. I'll leave the link down below if I have. It's the first in the Land of Stories series. It wasn't quite what I was expecting. There were a few issues I had with it. Uh, most notably, the language being used by the fairy tale characters. It suddenly felt very out of place and not very appropriate. So there's that little detail. I mean, I don't mind fairy tale characters using curse words and all that, but when they come out of nowhere and actually don't fit in with the way the characters behaved, then it jars with me a little bit. This was all right. It was fun. It's an interesting premise and I will continue with the series when I get the time and see how this grows. And for the chain prompt, I managed to read Pages and Co. Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James. This again is the first in a series. I loved this book so much. This is the book for anyone who ever felt that because they were a bookworm that they didn't fit in and that the characters that they read about felt more real to them than people around them. This is just beautiful. It's the first in a series. I'm going to be reading the entire series because I love it so much. I really like Tilly. I identified with her hugely and I loved all the book references as well in there. There's references to Anna Green Gables, uh, Treasure Island, The Little Princess. It's just beautiful. Sherlock Holmes references in here and the whole setup is just perfect. They were all the books that I managed to read but it meant that there were a few books that I did not get to and I'm really, really cross about that. So I still haven't read The Beast Player by Nahoko Yuhisa. I really want to read this. It was a tome and I think my drawback was I had two tomes on the Sherlockathon challenge. I had another tome for Believeathon. I ran out of time. I think is my biggest problem. So this will be going high on my priority list next year because I desperately want to read this. There is a sequel that's just come out as well and I get the feeling this is a book that doesn't get the love it deserves. I also didn't get around to reading Dodger by Terry Pratchett. Again, probably the top end of middle grade, uh, bottom end of YA and I really want to. I love Terry Pratchett and Dodger is one of the few books I don't think I've actually read properly. So I wanted to do that. Orphans of the Tide. I just did, again just did not get around to this one. I, I just ran out of time. I think too many books in too little time. And then most frustratingly the two new books that I wanted to read by own voices authors and I like I say I, the only way I could get them was through Amazon and it was so frustrating. I tried so hard to get them elsewhere. Um, I was really looking forward to them. I want to get them for my own work library and I can't seem to get them in at all. They never seem to be in stock. It's so frustrating. But that's Ghost Squad and Maya and the Rising Dark. They just sound absolutely fantastic and I will be picking these books up and reading them in the new year. That was my Believe-a-thon wrap up. Um, sorry it's a bit late going up but like I say I kind of deleted the original version of this video so... Just a little bit more rough and ready, but hey, there we go. Let me know down below your links to blogs and vlogs of your books that you managed to read for Believeathon, and keep your eye out on How to Train Your Gavin's channel because I'm sure he'll be doing a part four to Believeathon, which will be fantastic, and I look forward to seeing the theme for that one.
as always in the description box down below apart from all those links i've mentioned previously you will find links to my social media goodreads twitter and instagram will find me there's my book blog down there which has other reviews possibly a fuller review of some of these books i've mentioned as well so go and check that out and links to other booktubers because youtube's algorithm is rubbish so please go and share the love one other thing i'd like to mention is the book bubble it is a online social media magazine uh, based in the book community and they have very kindly shared one of my videos um, book reviews for the hunting party in their Christmas issue but it's all online it's all free I'll leave a link to all that down below they cover quite a range of stuff as well so there's something in there for everyone and it's quite nice seeing that the book community sort of being collated together a little bit and sort of highlighted what we have out in the world so if that's something that you think you might be interested in, go and have a look on that. As always, thank you very much for watching and happy reading. Be well.